In this video, I'll show you how to program the EpoMaker TH80 Pro keyboard with productivity shortcuts for Windows 11 and Premiere Pro. Plus, I'll walk through the settings and functions for some other unique features of the keyboard. I'm relatively new to the world of mechanical keyboards. Like anyone who spends a lot of time working on a computer, a nice functional keyboard is a priority. I've been using the ASUS Republic of Gamers Strix for a couple of years now. Also a while ago I bought and reviewed the rather spiffy Work Louder Creator Micro as I wanted a peripheral to create custom functions for my video editing work. However, I've always been envious of the nice looking keyboards I've seen in other content creator videos and finally decided to buy one for myself. After a little bit of research I decided on the EpoMaker TH80 Pro as not only was it reasonably priced, but I really loved the retro look of the keys, which reminded me of my childhood, playing on computers like the Commodore 64 and older Intel 386 computers. Having used them for a while now, the combination of the switches and the solid, chalky feeling keycaps makes this a delight to type on. However, ultimately the biggest selling point for me was the ability to reprogram the keys to do specific functions within different programs, which I go into depth later in this video. Here's a quick overview of the features of the keyboard before I explain how to program it. The keyboard can be wired with the accompanying USB-C cable, however the keyboard includes a hefty 4000 milliamp battery when using it wirelessly on your 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi network or via Bluetooth depending on your setup. Wi-Fi pairing is managed by holding down the function key and 4 at the same time until the RGB light flashes rapidly and then you plug in the USB dongle in that order. For Bluetooth, you hold down the function key and 1, 2, 3 simultaneously until the RGB lights flash blue. Then on your device, you'll search for the keyboard to connect. In either wireless mode, one really cool feature I like is the ability to check the battery charge status by holding down the function key and B at the same time. The RGB lights underneath the 1 through 10 keys will light up corresponding to the percentage of the battery capacity remaining. For instance, if the light is visible under the 0 key, the keyboard is fully charged at 100%. If the lights only light up to the 5 key, it means that the keyboard only has 50% charge left. When it comes to controlling the RGB lights, you can cycle through the options using function and then the forward slash key, or you can download the official EpoMaker software from the website. If you're already familiar with the likes of software such as VIA, the EpoMaker software for reprogramming the keyboard will feel very familiar, but more on how to reprogram the keyboard later in the next chapter of the video. When it comes to the RGB lighting, the options are pretty comprehensive and should enable you to find a pattern to suit any taste. As well as the colour cycles and input based lighting effects, there are also two options for music playback where the lights will react to the equaliser balance of the tracks that you play on your computer, and this can be quite fun. One thing to note is some options will run down the battery on wireless mode much faster if the LEDs are always on. The most important feature to me after the way the keyboard feels while typing was the ability to create shortcuts for my favourite and most used programs. First and foremost, I spend a lot of time in Premiere Pro. As I covered in my video about the Creator Micro, there are three main workspaces I use, and they are editing, audio, and captions and graphics. Within the editing workspace, I assemble my videos and apply all my effects. It's not necessarily the way to work as envisioned by Adobe or more experienced editors, but it works for me. I use the audio space for adjusting the volume of tracks and also using the stretch tool to make music fit to the length of my videos. Doing it here avoids opening additional panels in the editing workspace and having to reset the workspace to get back to my preferred layout. Finally, I manage all my motion graphics and text edits in the captions and graphics workspace. There are keyboard shortcuts built into Premiere Pro for all three workspaces by default, but they require memorizing three key presses to access them. Instead, I use the EpoMaker software to simply reassign F6 to F8 to change the workspace with a single key press. To do this, all you have to do is make sure you're on the main tab. 
I want F6 to be my shortcut to the editing workspace, so I highlight that with the mouse first and then navigate to Combination and check Alt, Shift and then put the cursor in the dialog and then tap the 7 key and then confirm it on the right hand side. As a side note, you'll notice there's a bug that offsets the interface slightly so the F keys don't line up with the graphic. Hopefully that's something that will be fixed in a future update by EpoMaker. Now when I'm within Premiere Pro and not in the editing workspace, I can simply tap F6 to return to my save layout. For the audio and captions and graphics workspaces, I simply repeat the procedure by using the corresponding Adobe shortcuts for F7 and then F8. If you prefer to use a modifier key instead to protect against the errant keyboard inputs or want to preserve the default functions of the F keys, then you can do this by using the function key instead as a modifier. Here, instead of simply pressing F6, you'll use a combination of F6 and the function key simultaneously to achieve the same result. First, make sure you're on the FN setting tab in the EpoMaker software. You'll find the F6 key is already assigned by default. To override the program, you simply click on it and follow the same procedure as before. The difference now will be that you have to use the function key to achieve the same input. If you're not familiar with macros, they are programmable instructions that enable you to combine multiple combinations of inputs and key presses so that you can press one key to trigger a string of actions. One example would be opening a series of programs simultaneously to start your workday. You can create a macro that enables you to open Chrome, open Zoom, and then enable any webcam software with a single key press. There are some extra steps to make this work required within Windows, however. For Premiere Pro, for instance, you must right-click on the application shortcut, click on the properties, and then create a shortcut to open the program. As a side note, some forward planning is required. You'll have to plan your macro out first before assigning the key combinations to the Windows applications. Attempting to create the Windows application shortcuts first will interrupt recording the macro in the EpoMaker software because the application will launch as soon as you press the keys, which is irritating. The one simple macro that I use is to have my PIN number assigned to unlock my computer. My PIN requires several key presses in sequence, which is only possible with a macro. Now, instead of typing in my PIN using the number keys, I've set it to a combination of pressing the function key and the tilde key at the same time. This will trigger the macro and fill out the pin on the lock screen. To set up a pin macro, navigate to the Macro tab. Next, click on the new macro icon and then right click to rename it to Pin. The next step is how you record the macro. Think of it like recording a video or audio, but instead you're recording your key presses. Tap Start and then type your pin into your keyboard and then tap Stop. The sequence will show you the input by pressing and releasing the keys with a number of milliseconds between the two actions. It's important for the macro to know when you release the key, otherwise it would read as if you're holding down the key indefinitely. The milliseconds represent the actual time it took for you to press and release the keys in real time. What you'll find is that you'll want to adjust the time taken to be faster. Leaving the default timing will feel very slow when you're not actually pressing the buttons yourself. To adjust the timing, simply click on the number and then choose Modify. Now you can adjust the milliseconds manually. The lower the number, the faster the input will happen. For more complex macros, you can click on Add and include additional delays as desired, or even add additional key presses or inputs from your mouse in between the depression and release of a key in your particular use case, if it requires it. One tip is that you must remember to assign the changes to the button again should you make any edits. If you forget to reassign the button, the old macro will still be active, which left me perplexed on more than one occasion as to why it wasn't working. Overall, I'm really pleased with the TH80 Pro for both the look and feel of the keyboard, but also the utility of programming the keys via the EpoMaker software. I'm still exploring more potential macros I can create and may follow up with step-by-step -step instructions if there's any interest. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching and as always, it would be great if you were to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more content on personal technology and the connected home.